Ever since high school, all the way up till now, me and a friend that I made in grade 9 have made it our mission to find and complete every fun co-op game we can get our hands on. One of our most favorite and painful experiences was sitting down and finishing Resident Evil 5 in one sitting. Never again. And so when we heard about a way out, we knew, we both knew on launch day we would be there picking this game up and playing it together. And again, we finished a way out in one sitting and had so much fun doing it. This is by far the best co-op game I have ever played. It is incredibly creative, insanely unique, and it kept the entire game fresh from start to finish throwing in some gameplay mechanics and some things that I have just never seen done in a game before. This game literally broke new ground as far as I'm concerned. It did things I did not expect. It sent me on an emotional roller coaster that I didn't expect. The most unique thing about this game right off the bat is you have to play it co-op. Whether you play it online or sitting on a couch with a friend, there is no way to play it single player. You have to play it co-op and that is brilliant. It leads to some, again, very unique gameplay that you just couldn't get if you were trying to cater for a single player experience as well as co-op. It was built from the very start to be played with a friend and no other way. Throughout the entire game, it is split screen. It's not like other co-op games where you're just completing the same mission together and you have relatively the same thing going on on either side. At almost all points of this game, you have the same story told in very different ways in different scenarios at the same time on your screen. It's kind of hard to explain how this works. So instead, let me show you. A friend of mine, Dreamcast Guy, also finished this game and loved it. So let's have him explain exactly how this split screen works. When it comes to a way out, by far the most interesting aspect of it is the fact that it's forced co-op. You cannot turn off split screen. Every single moment of the game, you're actually watching yourself and your partner at once. And it's really cool because it builds a really deep sense of trust into the struggle. You see your partner dealing with their own personal problems and also the really professional problems of trying to bust out of prison and rebuild your lives. Everything is based around how much you can work together with your friend. And it ends up building this really deep sense of human trust. It's not just about beating a level or getting a high score, it's about seeing my partner live, about living myself, and about trying to make sure that we don't get caught and end up right back in the prison we just broke out of. It is really cool that at any given time, right from the start, you get two aspects of every story. I don't want to ruin too many of these ways because they are so unique, fascinating, and incredibly exhilarating to play, but if I broke them all down or told you all about them, especially my favorite one, which let's just say it involves a beat-em-up aspect. As soon as it happened, I just, I lost it. I thought it was the coolest thing. And you go through stealth missions, you go through gunfights, you go through chase scenes in bikes and in cars, and every single level, every time you do one of these scenes or partake in an activity in this game, they mix it up in a different way. Action scenes where you're running, maybe you're chasing after someone, you're running along one path while your friend's running along another path, and you keep intersecting each each other and you can see the other person you can see what they're doing and it's completely different to what you're doing or maybe in another chase scene you have complete control over the game and the other player has to watch you for a few seconds and then you run past your friend and the camera shifts to their point of view and now they're in control they just kept throwing new scenarios at you to keep you invested and keep the game fresh as you went through that alone impresses me considering this came from a very small team of developers the other game this team worked on was brothers which again was a really fun game but this looking at this and playing this coming from brothers was such a huge leap in certain places this game looks gorgeous considering it came again from a small team I was incredibly impressed by the visuals the storytelling what had so many twists and turns that by the end of the story even though it was a six hour long campaign this game's only $30 to adjust for that six hour game length but honestly I would have paid 60 for how much fun I had and even though it was only six hours and we finished it in one sitting by the end of the game the start of the game felt so long ago and it felt like we had come so far because there was so much story crammed in so many twists and turns and part of that was really helped by the fact that you have two characters that have their own individual stories and at times it's almost telling two stories at once both of these characters have their own interactions in the world every character you can talk to each of them will have different things to say different ways to react to each of these characters you do have two separate storylines almost 
going along the same game. And the ending, I can't ruin the ending because it would seriously ruin the game, but it was it was just so good. It was it was the best thing they could have done with this story. It was so unique. This game is presented in chapters and throughout each chapter you are given a different world, a different location. You usually have a mission to complete like go here or find this thing or talk to this person. But before you do that, before you progress the story along, you usually have a little area that you can explore and the amount of things you can interact with and the amount of little easter eggs you can find is incredible. One part for example, just one example out of many, you go to a farm and all you have to do is find keys for a truck or something like that and be on your way. But there are so many things you can interact with in this farmhouse. You can play guitar or piano and you can go into a little Guitar Hero style mini game thing and if you sync it up with your partner and one of you plays guitar while the other one plays piano at the same time, you actually cue this little sequence where you both play this song together and then you get an achievement for it. It's just a little easter egg that you could easily miss Miss. And we did miss a ton of them. We actually went back through the game and found so many Easter eggs like that. There's one in a hospital where if you sit down and watch TV for like 20, 30 seconds, you actually get to go to the moon. But going back to the farm, you could sit down and watch TV, you could light a fire, you could play music, you could climb the windmill, you could play horseshoe with a friend and try and get the highest score. There was even a secret room we found where by pulling on the grandfather clock at the same time, it opened this door and in the door was a chest and it had a little Zelda Easter egg. I'm not gonna show that Zelda Easter egg to you because again, that's something you just need to see for yourself. But when every single area we went to was like this, we almost had more fun exploring and talking to people and finding these hilarious little situations and Easter eggs than we did the entire game. Almost, but it was such a highlight. Another really cool thing is you only have to buy one copy. It's a $30 game. And if you want to play with your friend, one of you buys the game, sends an invite to the other person, they download the game and they can play it for free. The only drawback is the person playing for free doesn't get achievements. But if you don't care about that, you only have to buy one copy. That's $15 each and you get to play an amazing co-op game. And believe me, believe me, as a co-op connoisseur, this was a AAA title for co-op experience. Trust me. Again, this was the most fun and most unique co-op game that we've ever played. And the ending, the ending. That's almost a spoiler. Oh God, I, I can't actually, I'm gonna have to bleep that out. I really wanna leave that in. It's subtle, but it, it, it would probably give it away if you put two and two together. A little tidbit I actually like about this game too was it was published by EA. But for whatever reason, this is one of them small cases of EA being the good guys because they gave Hazelight Studios all the profit. EA said from the start they were going to take what they needed to cover the production cost. But apart from that, they were going to give all the profits to Hazelight Studios. So... I mean, credit where credit is due. I know EA is EA, but that's actually pretty cool. And great for Hazelight because now they can make another game and I really want them to do that. I'd love them to make another game just like this and just make it their thing. But either way, I'm excited to see what they make next after this. Highly recommend, highly, highly recommend playing this game, 100%. Have you guys played it? Are you thinking about playing it? What do you think of the game? Let me know down below. Remember to like this video, be subscribed because I'm still sick, I'm still sick, and <laughs> I feel like crap, and I'm still kind of wearing eyeliner from the last video. <coughs> so sorry if I look kind of emo right now. <clears throat> oh, and a huge thank you to Dreamcast Guy for being in this video, helping out with that little skit in the middle. Uh, make sure to check out his channel down below.